Okay, now consider this graph here. GG plot data equals MPG plus point, geom point, x and y, geom smooth, x and y. Okay, so now what we are doing is we are using two geoms, but the aesthetics are all exactly the same for both the geoms. Okay, now suppose we want to change, let's say, the uh, y axis variable or the x axis variable, right? Then we have to go and make the change in two different places because it's being repeated here. Okay, now whenever something like this happens, I mean, this will produce the data, there's no problem. Whenever something like this happens, there's a tremendous amount of duplication. It's a good idea for us to move all of these into the main ggplot function, right? So instead, we can say the data, the mapping, uh, aesthetics are all, are all of them here, and then simply say John point, jump smooth. Okay, so the benefit would be that whatever you say in ggplot just simply carries in to both of these. So you don't have to repeat any of them. However, if you want to add additional aesthetics here, for example, if you want to say color or something here, or if you want to do a line type here, you can add them in here as well. Okay, so that uh, also makes a lot of logical sense. Okay, so the point is you can make some of the global settings in the ggplot function itself, and whatever you make in the global setting automatically carries in to the individual geoms. Okay, but you can override any of them in the individual geoms as well if you want. So there is all of this flexibility that's available to us. Okay, so that's what we are doing here. Right, so we are saying data, mapping, X and Y aesthetics, but in the geom point, we wanted to have color based on the class, and we did that. Okay, so this geom point gets these two aesthetics from here, and then it adds one more aesthetic here. So you get this particular graph. Okay, and of course, this aesthetic now applies only to geom point. Whereas the X and Y aesthetics apply both to geom point and geom smooth. So it's very powerful and pretty logical uh, how it works. Okay, now one more thing here notice uh, geom point mapping color equals class plus smooth. And for the geom smooth here, what we have done is we have said data equals filter MPG class equals subcompact. Sub Okay. In other words, what we are saying here is filter the data. That is, for this particular geom, overwrite the data as data was earlier MPG, saying don't use that data, instead use this data. And the data we are using is a filtered version of the data. We are taking only the subcompacts and pl plotting the smooth graph only for them. Okay. So now what happens is the smooth graph shows only the subcompact cars, not all the cars. Okay, And when you say SE equals false, what you're saying is, this is part of the geom smooth, what you're saying is, the confidence interval that we showed, don't show that. Right? SE equals false says, don't show me the confidence intervals. Okay, So that's what you're doing here. So it is possible for different geoms to have different data. Right, so the global setting said data is MPG, so the data for geom point is MPG, because we didn't say what the data is here. But for geom smooth, we've given a different data set. That works fine. Okay, so some questions just to strengthen our understanding. What geom do you think you would use to create a line chart? Well, as you can probably guess, other than geom point, everything else is symmetric. So maybe geom line would do the job for us. Okay, so try it out and see what you get. What you're going to get is that uh, it's going to plot all the points and then simply connect them with the line. In this particular case, the line is not a, it's not a very useful chart, but just to give you an idea of how easy it is to change the different geoms. Okay, now run this code in your head and predict what the output will look like, and then run the R code, uh, code in R and check your predictions. Okay, so before I jump in, I would suggest uh, very strongly that you stop the video and just visually imagine what it's going to work like. Okay, just go through each of the things, and see what it's like, and then run the code in R. You have the code in the code file. Run the code and see if what you got was what you expected to get. Okay, so clearly what you get is this. 
The reason you get this is, first of all, we are saying data is MPG, uh, X and Y aesthetics uh, we've got, and in fact, color also we've uh, put the thing here, the aesthetic for color. Then we said geom point, so we expect to get a scatter plot. So that explains the presence of the scatter plot. And for the scatter plot, we said color each point depending upon the drive. So clearly, you're going to see the drive as a legend, and the color of a point is going to reflect the kind of drive the car has, front, rear, or four-wheel drive. Okay, so that is all uh, as expected. And we said geom smooth, SC equals false. Okay, and that explains why you have uh, geom smooth. And why is it that we have a smooth line separately for each of the drives? That's because in the ggplot aesthetics, we have said color is drive. Okay, so the color of each of those, the same thing applies to geom point. When it applies to geom point, it reflects in the color of the points. Color equals drive when you apply it to geom smooth. Because the aesthetics you put in the ggplot level, so it's going to fail, uh, flow through to the geoms as well. So in geom smooth, when you said color is drive, that reflected in the color of the point, the, of the smooth charts. And because of that, it automatically produced a separate smooth chart for each level of drive. Okay, so that's why you have three different smooth lines and that also explains the color of the smooth lines. Okay, and finally, we have drawn smooth lines. We're not seeing the confidence intervals. Why is that? Because we said SC equals false. Okay, so it's very important for you to analyze this very carefully and think about why we are not getting just one smooth line. Instead, why are we getting three different smooth lines? Okay, this is an important skill. Uh, not only to generate the charts you want, but also to look at the code and predict what kind of chart it's going to actually generate. Okay, what does the SC argument to Geom Smooth do? Well, we know now, SC is false, says you don't get the confidence intervals. Okay, so we know this. This it controls whether the confidence interval limits are shown or not. Okay, will these two graphs look the same or different? Explain. Okay, once again, I would say pause the video, carefully look at the code, make your prediction, then run the code and see what actually happens. Okay, don't just, uh, you know, continue the video and listen to my uh, description of the solution, then you're not going to gain any benefit for the time that you spent. Okay, I assume you paused the video, tested it out for yourself. Uh, both of these are going to generate exactly the same graph. That is because here we have said data uh, is MPG and then we have given all the aesthetics here. And then we simply said geom point, geom smooth. Effectively, what's going to happen is that all of these settings would now flow through to both of these. And that's exactly what's going on here. Right, so we didn't say ggplot uh, data anything. We didn't say anything in the ggplot. So, Everything is going to be specified in the individual geoms, so we did that. But it's exactly the same as specifying everything in the main, ge main ggplot and saying nothing in the geoms. Because uh, specifically in this case it works because both of geoms, uh, both the geoms have exactly the same data and the same aesthetic mappings. Right? So these two should produce exactly the same result. Okay. Clearly, in this particular example, the first way would be preferable. The second is so uh, verbose, there's no point in repeating everything. Okay. So, write the R code to generate these two graphs. First of all, note several things. First of all, the points are thicker. Right. This is not the basic uh, standard point that you get with the scatter plot. And in this case, you have one smooth line. And of course, you don't have the the confidence intervals. In this case, you have multiple smooth lines. And based on our prior experience, it looks like this is uh, the drive because there are three. Uh, there are three different lines. So clearly, this is being done on the drive. Uh, uh, on the drive, the aesthetic is being driven by the drive. The smoothing is being done uh, for each drive value. Okay, so once again, uh, pause the video, try this out and then see how, how it's going to work for you. Okay, the answers are here. Uh, in this particular first case, you want only one line, so 
uh, I've said mapping, the aesthetics are the same for both, for the scatter plot as well as for the uh, smooth line. So we put all the important aesthetics there. And for geom point, I just said size equals 3 because it looks like these plots, the, the points were bigger. So I said size equals 3. And for the smooth, I didn't want the, uh, the we didn't want the confidence interval. So I said SE equals false, right? Now, there's no point in putting the SE equals false up here in ggplot. Okay, that is because uh, SE equals false would not apply to geom point and it would create an error. Similarly, uh, size is not something that applies to geom smooth. So we put it here, right? So put all the common things there and put all the specific things here. Now, in the second case, what we want is one line for each value of drive. So we have said group equals drive, right? Notice that there was no, there was no legend and all the lines are exactly the same. They look exactly the same, right? So we don't want to associate any specific color or uh, you know, line type or anything with, uh, uh, with the drive. Instead, I'm just saying group it by drive so that I get a different line for each value of drive, but nothing else. SE equals false again because there is no uh, there is no confidence interval. Okay, write the R code to get these two graphs. Again, pause the video, try it out, and then come back. Okay. So I assume you have tried it out. So let's see how this works. So in this particular case, of course, in both the cases. It's being driven by drive, so that's a good thing. So in this case, notice that uh, the line color is different for each value of drive for the smooth line. So clearly, the smoothing is being done by the drive. And of course, the scatter plot coloring is also being done by the drive. And the size of the point, I assume, is, is bigger than usual. right? So those are the things that will determine this particular chart. For this chart, there's only one smooth line, and therefore, uh, the you know there is no grouping on the smoothing geom smooth there is no grouping okay uh, but the color aesthetic is applied for the geom point so the geom point is going to look the same in both of these graphs but the smooth is going to be different in one case you're going to have uh, the color based on the drive the second case for the smooth line you're not going to have any any kind of grouping whatsoever okay so in the first case, we said line type is drive. Okay, actually, it should not be line type. I think it should be line color. Uh, if I say line type, then you would have seen dashed lines and so on. Okay, so that's a small small mistake on my part. In this particular case, we should probably say color equals drive, right? So in that case, we could move the color uh, equals drive up here because it's going to be the same for both of these. Okay. So in the second case, there's no uh, for the smooth. There's no other. Uh, aesthetic just put SC okay yeah so this is the code where we wanted line type okay so this is the instead of color from the previous slide you need to have line type here now this code is a little tricky right so here you're seeing that the points have a nice white rim around them okay one way to do that is to plot the points actually twice geom point twice once with as usual with the color being based on the drive and once with just a fixed color but a bigger size okay so that's how i got uh, this one so this part is same line type is drive it's exactly the same so this part it's going to be uh, geom point is appearing twice once i'm just saying color is white size is 4 so that plots a white point first and then within the white point, I'm plotting a size of 2 with color equals drive. Okay, so that gives you this effect. Of course, it's not, uh, I don't recommend that we really need to do this or anything. It's just some jazz. But it's good for practice in terms of uh, honing or strengthening your understanding of ggplot. Okay, uh, so we'll stop here for uh, this session. You've got a good, uh, I think, an introduction to many of the uh, very important and exciting features of ggplot. Uh, I'll post an assignment that covers all of the topics that we have discussed.